Hello and a very warm welcome to Nanning in China for our continuing coverage of the 2019 Sudaman Cup. Fascinating part of the world with a population of around about 7 million. Magnificent cuisine as ever in this part of the world. Known as the Green City because of the abundance of lush subtropical foliage to be found here. But the action is inside for the next seven days. We're at the Guangxi Sports Centre, just nine years old, an excellent venue for this team event, mixed team event. And we'll have comprehensive coverage of the 31 nations bidding for glory, although of course only 12 can actually lift the famous trophy. Been playing for it since the late 1980s. The other nations striving to get promoted to a higher group. We'll explain how that works in a moment. But it's group stages initially. It's the second day today of the groups. And we've got the quarterfinals on Thursday and Friday, the semis on Saturday. And of course, we'll bring you live coverage of every single shot in Sunday's final. Spectacular venue. Early in the morning here, just uh, gone 11 a.m. local time in China. Here are the 12 teams who potentially could lift the trophy. Japan are the top seeds. We'll see them in action shortly. South Korea are the defending champions. Only three nations have ever won it. South Korea, China, and Indonesia. The Chinese bidding for an 11th success this week. Well, here's our schedule for today on court one. As mentioned, we'll see the top seeds, uh, the Japanese against Russia. And then later on at six o'clock, you can enjoy full coverage of the dangerous Danes against England, who were beaten 4-1 by Indonesia yesterday. So they certainly have something to prove this evening. This was the Japanese huddle. We recorded it for you a little earlier. One thing about these uh, type of events, it certainly engenders a team spirit. See there with the smiles of the uh, Japanese squad. You would expect the top seeds to come through relatively comfortably against the Russians, but they do have an experienced squad. And sports nothing if not unpredictable. action on five courts here today. Now here's what we've got in store on court one. Uh, Hoki and Nagahara will start favourites in the mixed doubles, but the Russian pair are former European junior champions. Then it's the men's singles, a fascinating clash between the exciting Enta Nishimoto against Vladimir Malkov, some nine years his senior. The men's doubles is next. Last year's Korean Open champs, Endo and Watanabe versus the veteran Russians Ivanov and Sozanov. In the women's singles, Natalia Perminova has it all to do against ex-world champion Nozomi Okahara. And we conclude with the women's doubles, world number two pairing, Fukushima and Hirota, taking on Molotova and Davlato. Kicking off, though, as mentioned, with the mixed doubles. You can see the experience there of that of that Russian pair. I still have a feeling that this might possibly be a little closer than many are expecting. My name's Trevor Harris, alongside me, Steve Pedersen. Mention the Russians are an experienced squad, not so much in the in the mixed doubles, uh, but later on we'll see some of their veteran players, um, Steve. Uh, the thing with Japan is they are resting a few of their top stars, but you can never take anything absolutely for granted in this event. No, you can't. We saw that yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. China Malaysia, China Malaysia put pressure on Chinese home favorites. And uh, if Russia is to um, get a point from any other match than the men's doubles, this could be it. the next level two of the youngsters are going to go to the next Japanese mixed doubles is not um, normally there at the later stages in the World Tour tournaments. So players out on court, as you can see. Steve mentioned their relative inexperience. Uh, w Tober, just 20, and a partner out of only a year older. Not that the Japanese 
here exactly veterans will give you a little rundown of uh, the player detail momentarily ahead of the uh, opening day of action on court one on day two of this Suleiman Cup well, there's Adam Off who's 32 now his uh, international debut some way back, sorry, rack 32 is what I meant to say. He's <laughs> 21, as I said. Up as high as 31 in the overall rankings. They have won five major tournaments, these two, at minor tournaments, these two. But they are the, the smaller events. So this is rather an exalted atmosphere for Devlatova and her partner. Just 20, as I said. Started playing at the age of nine. She did make the national team at 15. Ranking 32 is not that much higher than the two Japanese players that they're opposing today. So they do have a puncher's chance, you would say. Let's look at the Japanese, starting with Nagahara, the multiple World Junior Championship medalist. She won the most improved player 2018 after she won. The World Championship in the women's doubles with Matsumoto. Ranking went from 14 to 3 in a, in a year. That's why she won that most approved award. And Hoki is 24, a year older. A decent record in men's doubles. And also a runner up in the mixed doubles in the Japanese Open with uh, Hirota just a couple of years ago. David Graf von Schwerin from Austria is the man in the chair. And he will be assisted by service judge Trish Grubb of Dubrava from New Zealand. So at the start, Steen, this is you know, going on through till Sunday when we'll have the final. Kind of like any longish event, you, you don't want to necessarily peak too soon. And we're going to see a lot of changes, aren't we, in terms of the personnel, especially with the likes of the Japanese, the fat Sid nations. How, how important is it to, to rotate well in this event? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a good question because I think you know, different coaches uh, see it differently. Um, there's, uh, of course, the... Um, the um, fatigue gentlemen. thing to take into account, right, but I think there's a lot of breaks in this uh, tournament here. But there's and also about keeping all back. players in the team happy, keeping a good team spirit. And on my left, Japan represented by Hoki Takuro and Nagahara Wakanawa. Russia to serve, Alina Dabletova to Nagahara Wakana. Level, play. So here we go. First shuttle hit in anger. Dabia Tova serving. Whoa. And so often the first match or the first couple of matches can Whoa. set the tone. Just a reminder, obviously, even if we get to a three-level, three-one scenario, either way, we will play the full five matches because it comes down to teams on level points. It can come down to games one and even points one on occasion. One thing they've got to cut out are those unforced errors, the Russians. So Alimov, who was way too late on that uh, deception there, it's like he was saying to himself afterwards, "Oh, I forget. This is not. Um, this is top-level opposition that I'm up against here." Quickly onto that, Nagahara. 
certainly expect the higher ranked Japanese pair to try and take the initiative early, and that's what they've done. Oh, interesting there that uh, we saw Nakahara work from the back of the court like we see her in the women's doubles with Maya Matsumoto and, and Hoki at the net, uh, as we uh, often see him in his men's doubles with um, Yuko Kobayashi. There's uh, Vladimir Ivanov to the right. Trying to smash one of those clapping things there. Teamwork, wasn't it? That was yeah. excellent from Animov initially throughout that rally. Excellent mix skills. That uh, block there to the uh, Five, mix six. point. The mix point is um, the area just around the um, first service line to either of the sight lines there, in between the female and the male player in the normal position. Often oh. Referred to as the mixed point because it's very, very good spot to uh, put your shots and mix doubles. Oh! Every time they get to within a point, the, the uh, Japanese just up, up, up. up the ante a little bit. Seven, five. like that it's unlikely to come back well placed see both players going for it you saw yesterday that um, Slight drift alongside the court coming from what kind of Nakahara serving here towards the Russians. So, the Japanese player play with the drift and it should make it a little bit easier for them to kill their attack on the Russians. Very often, we see that in mixed doubles, it's actually an advantage to play with the drift unless it's uh, too severe. I don't think that's the case here. What a particularly tall man. Could have helped you, but he gets Ten, tremendous six. elevation on those jump smashes. Spot on placement as well on that occasion. in the Japanese pairing's favor. Широко, жестко причём широко, да? Мальчика ищем больше. Потому что девочка всё равно готова, да? 
не повторять в одну и ту же зону. Когда в защите играете, не просто, от, не просто от, отпихиваться, а переходи в контратаку смелее. В диагональ играет по тебе, пацан, сразу же по прямой активно играешь. Потому что пассивная защита, она ничего не дает. Вот тебе следующий Они сразу же, и девчонка конечно. входит, она лучше даже атакует, чем пацан. Поэтому все равно пробуйте, рискуйте, да? Родион, ритм меняешь все время. Молодец. Trying to consolidate. Well. Get the first game under their belts here, the Japanese. Oh. This brave defense while it lasted. side with Alimo who's definitely got some uh, mixed double skills and uh, good touches and so on but he doesn't come across as being as fit as he should be they're, they're playing a Japanese pair who is the first round second round pair in the world tour uh, circuit and it seems like he can't really follow pace with the gold at the European Junior Championships in 2017, I would have expected um, a bit more progression. Yes, I, I would have. They are worth, um, I mean, they must think that it's worth giving it a shot to, to go for the uh, top in, uh, in mixed doubles. result this year was a quarterfinal in, uh, in Spain Masters, but if you look at their results list, there's the Russians, there, there hasn't been a lot of um, results where I say, ooh, that's, that's promising. Um, sometimes you've got to, um, you've got to step down, take a step down in terms of um, in tournaments you play, so uh, you play tournaments where you play a lot of matches and um, they say 20 match point and you're serving, that, that's always good to hear that. But let's see if it's just um, the nerves of uh, representing the country in the Sudirman Cup. But, but, uh, in, like some, in some ways you could, you could sort of say there might be a bit more pressure in an event like this because you kind of feel that you're... You know, you're carrying the nation's hopes yeah. on your shoulders rather than just your own. You don't want to let anyone down. Control of the rally. 
Now he's made to move over a little bit of longer distances. Just missed it, but there's going to be a challenge here. And a very quick one, too. Both players, and when you see that, you think, hmm, maybe a decent chance of getting a decision in your favour here. So for the first time, Hawkeye is going to tell us, called out. She missed by a fair margin. Challenge One challenge remaining. 16, so maybe it's just they were both hopeful rather than both expectant. Two challenges for each pair in each game, and if you're successful with the challenge, then you keep it. Suggests that he's not enjoying himself too much out there. <laughs> yeah. He can hope for a little help from the change of ends after the first game here, where the drift should help his attack a little bit. But so far, he hasn't been that dangerous. We also saw that on the one you know, on the challenge that he really have to come up with some extraordinary shots to to score points. It was an ace. Excellent service. Oh. I shouldn't do enough for the return of your table, but even so, Nagahara onto it in a flash. And all of a sudden, they've effectively run away with this opening game. Four points for the Russians since the mid-game interval. Quarter of an hour, fairly comfortable opening game for Hoki and Nagahara. 21 points to 10. It was vaguely competitive in the first few points. After that, though, the Japanese fairly ran away with it. And it's going to have to be some kind of a team talk here from the Russian coaching staff. Try and restore confidence as much as anything else. More of the same, I guess, would be what the Japanese will want. even though they won convincingly in the first game and to me that's a sign that they're not only playing for this match but also for development uh, for future um, competitions so, the way to do it is the opportunities you get to um, make the most of it. Let's have a first. If it goes as smooth as the first game, they, um, they should be able to focus on uh, future development as well. 
So to Curry Hoki to start game two. She's working much harder than uh, Alimov is working when he has the initiative on the backcourt on the Russian side. And he's got to apply much more pressure from the backcourt. He's got to work much harder to give his partner, Alina Davletova, a chance of um, intercepting on the front court. Uh, what he's doing right now, that, that's um, good enough. It's like scared really rightly so you know, by the Japanese defense. You know that they really need some the defense. All you know the Japanese don't play this. Well, he was never going to have a problem from that range, pretty much on the service line when he hit that. Join themselves yeah. at uh, oh. cheering party. <laughs> it's one of the great things about it, a team event is that the squad that you know, the rest of the squad that's not actually playing, not down to play today, still really get into the the whole joy of the event. Yeah, imagine that this was a final in, uh, in a regular tournament. They won't have the whole Japanese team sitting cheering for them. They would probably have them sitting there watching the match, but not cheering as. Um, as uh, loudly as we see them now. Yeah, it's the, it's the whole national identity thing. This is when, when patriotism is a really good thing. When all the members of the squad come together for a common cause. position uh, from Takura Hoki. Thing won't improve animals' mood. Oh. 
Kim Nagahara could do about that. Touch from the mid court, uh, Ali Mo. Maybe there has been a little more fight about the Russian pair in the second game so far. The other thing is we've had 13 points, but they've all been relatively short. Yeah. In the first game, the longer points was when the Russians really struggled. Two-point lead the Russians had has come and gone. He's uh, back being vocal again. Oh. 
And he hasn't missed many of those, to be fair. I'm surprised he missed that one. Slender one, the Japanese pair as they go for the mid game interval. if they are entertaining any hopes of a fight back here and they're more than it's over Timid again from Alamov in that last point. At least they're staying with them. They've done the first part, they've come back from that um, big loss in the first game and uh, stopped the rot, so to speak. Second game. Still not been a chance. Resolved when they chose ends that the Russians chose to start on the near side of the court here, so I'd expect them to feel that you know, they're on the better side of the court now and wants to finish there in an eventual third game. Successful in injecting pace into the rallies, Porky and uh, Nagahara, they definitely got the upper hand in the opinion.
Well, that's almost a collector's item. She's been so consistent with those kind of shots, Nagahara. Yeah, and uh, I was fairly critical with this man here in the first game, Rodion Alimov. But had this second game been the first game, I would have been very critical of uh, oh! and Nagahara. They've made way too many errors. Um, maybe they feel that they've got this match under control and is um, conserving uh, energy. Yeah, sometimes complacency can be the enemy. Team. Seems like they have everything under control, Hawkeye and Nakahara, and just tightening the grip now. Or maybe they kind of refocus when yeah. it's around about 15 all. And they're thinking we could easily get dragged into a, a three game battle here, but now they're just a couple of points away from giving their country the uh, early advantage in the tie. took just 36 minutes to secure the victory 21 15 in that second game and although Alimov and Pavlatova put up a little more resistance in the end class told so pretty much as we expected Steen really in that opening opening match today yeah I, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed with uh, Especially uh, Alimov, but uh, with the Russian mixed doubles, I'd expect more from uh, a pair that won the European Juniors just two years ago. Confirmation then, 21-10, 21-15 in 35 minutes on court. We're back shortly with the men's singles. <laughs> 